Hello everyone and welcome to this video on integrating Power BI. I'm Tim Weinzaffel and in this video I'm just going to give an overview of using the Power Automate button in Power BI. I have done a number of videos uh, so far on showing how you can integrate some Power Automate flows within your Power BI report but one thing I started thinking about is it might be really good just to kind of do a step back and give an overview of how the button works and just a couple of uh, key considerations in working in Power Automate. Because once you have the foundation of how the button works, then that really opens up a lot of possibilities with Power BI and Power Automate. Let's jump over and walk through this in an example. Here I have a pretty simple Power BI report and I've got a table visual showing. Now, what I want to do is let's go ahead and pull in and this over here is the Power Automate for Power BI button and you can go ahead and pull this in and that allows you to add a button to trigger a Power Automate flow. Now when you first click on it, it is going to give you a bunch of instructions here and it is just five steps. And we're going to walk through each one of those. I'm going to highlight a few key things to be aware of. The first one is, it says here, select an environment. Now, what this means is, uh, and you have to do this before you proceed further, is you have to indicate which environment in the Power Platform you're going to want to work in. By default, it's going to give you the default environment, just like it's showing here for me. You can click on it and it will give up a range of options if you have access to other environments such as say a sandbox environment or a production environment and then you could select it here so i may uh, do mine in the training environment and this is also where the flow will be saved if you're creating a new flow or if you're selecting an existing flow perhaps you created it previously or somebody else created it you can then uh, select it and this is the environment so you want to go ahead and do this first because once you select the environment if you need to change it you then have to delete the button and start all over again, but you won't have to recreate the flow. So it's just simply um, deleting a button and adding a new one. The next step is gonna be add data. Now this step is actually optional and is only needed if you are going to pass data from your Power BI report to the Power Automate flow. And you don't always have to do this, for example, I have a very simple video on how you can create a button to trigger a Power BI refresh. You don't need any data fields there because you all you're doing is using the flow to trigger a refresh. Now, if you do want to add data fields, it's just like any other visual, it is here. So in my case, I am going to add some data fields because what I want to do is I want to pass the data that's in this table over to my flow. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna add these same fields. So let me add the uh, project title. I'll add the project status. I have the project manager up here and I have their email. So let's go ahead and add that. And I've added them here. Now over here, I have renamed them uh, and I can do the same thing here or I can leave them as they are and then these fields will be passed over with these the names as shown here. Now, the great thing here is if you need to add data fields later, you can always add them at a later time and or you can remove them and then that will become, um, you know, those new fields will be available. So now I've got my uh, environment set, I've got my data fields that I wanna add in here and now I want to go ahead and set up my flow. So the easy thing to do here uh, to do that is if I, if I just go up here there will say more options if I click on that and it will say edit and this will go ahead and now open up Power Automate uh, the Power Automate interface directly within Power BI now one thing I will say and this is loading is once you create a flow you can certainly access any flows that you create in the Power Automate application itself um, but here you uh, here you can actually create the flow directly in Power BI uh, I've got a bunch of flows created, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new flow and I'll create the instant cloud flow and it's going to automatically provide that uh, Power BI button clicked trigger. And now the nice thing is any of those data fields that you add, that information is now available in your flow. So for example, 
if I go to add a compose, which is a very simple action, and I want to pull in and access any of the data fields, when I go over here to uh, dynamic content right here, I can see, first of all, there's going to be some standard ones that they always will be available, but then you're going to see here are the fields that I've added. So the title field, the project status, the full name, and the email. And then there's some additional ones down here. Um, there's one at the bottom, which I'm not gonna cover in this email, in, in this video, I actually uh, use this in, a, in other videos, but it is a Power BI data field, which is a, a complete table of all of the data. So again, you have all of this, these fields access, and if I add new fields, they will be available. A quick note, if you are accessing your flow through the Power uh, Automate application, these fields will not actually appear. I'll actually throw uh, an example up here and I'll show how those fields do not actually appear. So if you do need to access any of your uh, dynamic content, you have to go through the uh, this Power BI to Power Automate interface in order for those to appear. I'm not gonna walk through a flow. I've got a number of other videos that actually do this. This video is only talking about uh, some of the nuances of the Power Automate button visual. And now you'll see that once I've applied a flow to a button, it uh, is showing here in the standard format and I can go ahead, resize it and do the formatting. Uh, one other thing, which was step number four, is you may have to share the flow. So depending on what your flow is, who's using it, you may have to share it in Power Automate. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but that is the fourth step, so just be aware of that. I wanna highlight some key considerations that you wanna be aware of when you are working with the Power Automate button visual in Power BI. And the first one is gonna be be aware that this the button is just like any other visual in that as you interact with visuals, slicers, filters, that sort of thing, the data behind your button, if you are passing in data fields like I am here, will be impacted as well. So let's give you an example here. I have project status. If I go ahead and filter this to say in process, I now have eight records there is going to be only eight records in my button. And to prove that, I can actually go ahead and let's go ahead and expand the button and let's convert this to a table. And you can see that I have the eight records there. So this is also a great tip that if you want to see the data that is behind your button, simply click on the button, convert it to a table. You can also then just convert it right back to a button and then go ahead and resize that. And that is a great way, so be aware that data interactions will impact your flow, as your button as well. Uh, second thing I did cover that in order to access Power BI content, you have to be in uh, the editing. So if I wanna go here, I could go back up here and I can edit this and re-access the flow, the Power Automate interface for any editing. But, and that's the only way to do that. You can still certainly edit your flow in Power Automate, you just won't have access to the dynamic content. Third thing, there is a row limitation of 1,000 records. So in my case, I'm passing, right now I've got eight records showing, this is fine. If this was over 1,000 records, only the first 1,000 will be passed over. Uh, I have a video on how you can create a button to export data, and there is also a video there about how you can actually get around this 1,000 row limit, but just be aware of that. Another thing for my users, once they click on the button, it is pressed. There is no confirmation, none of those pop-ups that can ask users to confirm. Um, again, I have a video that will cover how to get around that as well and create a very simple confirmation box for users. The final consideration that I wanna mention is also, again, be aware of what data you are passing through your flow. Like I said, converting this to a table is important. You know, you want to make sure that once you send all that records uh, and you trigger the flow and if you're getting into uh, that flow is cycling through all those records, you want to make sure that you don't pass unnecessary information and then result in unforeseen issues with your flow. Uh, I have another a video around um, adding in some safety measures in your flow. I'll put a link to that right here. Um, 
So again, these are just some things that you want to be cognizant of. And that's it. That's all there is to the Power Automate button. Uh, you can see how easy it is to use, but understanding just these small nuances, um, for me, it was very important as I started to really explore how to apply flows and what I could do with this and understanding this really helped me a lot. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also, please subscribe. I'm going to be continuing to do more integration videos with Power BI to help you expand your reporting capabilities. So thank you so much for watching.